With companies setting ambitious climate goals, how do we bridge the gap between tech innovators and investors, all while ensuring a clean and just energy transition? Arshad Mansour of the Electric Power Research Institute joins me today for a conversation at Logan Circle's Maiz 64. I'm Monica Trousey. This is Off the Menu. Arshad, it's so nice to see you. Monica, pleasure, pleasure. Thank you for joining me for lunch today. Why don't we head into the dining room? Why don't we do that? Thank you. We seem to get mixed signals from the private sector. On the one hand, many companies are setting these huge decarbonization goals. A lot of them attached to 2050, right? It's a long way out. But if you're in this world, you you know that 2050 is actually not that far out. On the other hand, a lot of the actions and investments are really just about the bottom line, right? So if they serve the shareholders, those are the actions that are taken. At what point do we kind of bridge that gap and get to a place where um, the private sector is really behaving in a way that is centered around decarbonizing the economy? This transition to a clean energy future has to be just, especially for the people who can ill afford it. There is not a single utility on the electricity side that I know that have not committed to a clean energy future. If you look at what's happening on the financial side, the bottom line is meeting the ambition for clean energy, the ESG requirements that are coming up, the ESG metrics that are coming up, that is also incentivizing private sector to invest in a clean energy future. But it has to be just for the people who can afford the least. I grew up in Bangladesh. I have a personal motivation, not just for EPRI, but for countries like Bangladesh that would be impacted the most when sea level rises. I've been having so many conversations with the financial community. Um, about ESG and beyond, and what I hear from them is they want to know more, right? They are hungry for this education about all of the tools for decarbonization, whether it is nuclear or or batteries or, or CCUS. How do we go about making the connections in a better way between the folks who have the cash and the people who are developing the technologies, right? Because I think that really needs to happen. We're at that moment now. What the community needs is the truth. They need to know what the state of the technology is. They need to know what has the potential. They need to know what are the milestones. And if you're talking about advanced nuclear, this decade is about execution to make sure we have at least one SMR, multiple advanced nuclear reactors, and a micro reactor that is operational by the end of this decade. And we got to make sure we do that so that investors have trust on these new emerging technologies. We had an event with JP Morgan EEI. You were there and last year, it was amazing. You had a bunch of technologists like us talking with a lot of financial people. And it's not just JP Morgan. It's if you look at EPRI, we have Morgan Stanley in our board. We have JP Morgan, we have other financial, because they're a key stakeholder in this clean energy transition. Yeah, and they get it. They're they're bought in to really being a part of of the decarbonization solution. It's just a question of, okay, where where does the money go now? Do you think we're going to get to that place where our grid is resilient in the way that it needs to be, where we have decarbonized um, to the point that's necessary uh, to to combat climate change? So you're talking with a technologist, we are eternal optimists. Um, where there is a will, there is a way. Yeah. I think on the technology side, there is a will. I think the industry, especially in the electricity sector, there is a will. I think we are seeing good advancement in policy in different parts of the world and even in the US. Not everything is in aligned, but we have to be in alignment. There is no other option but to be successful. I love your optimism. Um, It was nice to see you for lunch. Thank you for joining me uh, while you're in town. I appreciate it. It is my pleasure. Thank you. (laughs) 